Hello, welcome everybody to CNET's Open Tab. This is the show where we have a few drinks and we chat with you, the live viewing audience on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever you're coming from. Thanks for joining us. My name is Jeff Bacalar. On the couch are two very special guests. The first one, you will know him if you listen to my podcast, The 404 Show. He is the audiophiliac man himself, Mr. Steve Guttenberg. Round of applause for Thank Mr. You. Steve Guttenberg. Bring your left off the sphere. Sphere. Right. His nickname is Sphere. Everybody, do do yourself a favor and admire the man's <laughs> shirt for a second. Yes. That's corn on the cob. Horizontally. Corn on the cob. Thanks. Respect that. Drink it in for a second. Yeah. To his left uh, is senior associate editor yeah. Ty Pendleberry. How are you, sir? I am very well, sir. Thanks you, for sir? being here. Thank you. You guys have your own podcast, right? No. Yeah. In utero. Sure. In, in utero. utero. Yeah. Great Nirvana That's a good name. album. <laughs> Good name for the podcast. <laughs> During Open Tab, we are taking your questions and comments live. So do yourself a favor and get mentioned on the show. Type it on that keyboard that you're sitting at or on your phone. And uh, we'll, we'll typing take this? typings with your thumbs. Right, you were typing. Well, there's both kinds of typing. Right. I'll show you what a phone looks like. It'll be great. Of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do have a smartphone. So do all that and we'll uh, respond to that, whatever you guys want to talk about. We will talk about, uh, but you guys are experts in the field of audio and fidelity. I want to ask you guys some questions about the way we listen to music these days and you guys will hopefully be able to help out some of our viewing audience. So how do you guys, people who take audio to such a level that most people don't, who, who care about that, that phonic sort of Feel. The phonic feel. The phonic feel. I just named your podcast for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so simply put, how do you guys listen to music? Like, what what is your sort of ritual with that? I think we both differ. I'm, I'm com things, almost yes. completely <laughs> digital. Right. Uh, with a bit of vinyl going in there. So but you consider him like a savage. Yeah. Like he's a savage I'm, person. I'm, I am from a, a, diamond in the rock. a colonial country. So, sure. You know, so when you're a say, bit backwards. Well, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when you say digital only, explain that. Uh, most of the stuff I, I will probably buy a couple of secondhand CDs, but most of the stuff I buy is FLAC files straight from the net. Right. And FLAC files, for people who don't know, that's FLAC. That is the the best encoding or it's raw it's, it's the raw sort of right so it, it's, it's compressed like a zip file so right. everything that goes in there comes out again gotcha. whereas something like an mp3 you pull you pull bits out willy-nilly almost just to get the size down right people don't realize how much <coughs> audio information is being deleted when you listen to an mp3 uh steve's uh read me the riot well, act most about, most streaming is mp3 right most streaming is mp3 as well so okay so we have you're you're the digital guy for this conversation and steve well, I, will I be the bet we can guy. guess what side of the fence you yes, fall I'm, on. I'm in the pure and perfect side. But no, seriously, when, when you ask that question, it, for me, it's like, where do I listen? Right. Listening at home is very different and better in almost every way than listening somewhere else. So you're saying, you're saying, it's people, quieter. You're saying people don't take the time to just right. sit down in front of the right. whatever it is. The, people don't take time they're to sit in front of the iPhone. They're stereo, they're gramophone, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Right. They're not at one with their music. The music is there. People are doing other things. Yeah, is they're what you're multitasking, saying. whatever. So you, so you don't think there's enough of just like sitting down and, and, and appreciating what you're listening to? I'm not saying that's the only way. Right. I'm just saying if you love a band, sometimes just listen to a tune, close your eyes. And don't do anything else. Closing of the eyes, I've actually... that stops you from multitasking. Yeah, I've, I've done that. I've closed my eyes, uh -huh. and I fell asleep. <laughs> so, what band was it? Uh, it, was like, it was more like a jazzy Was it Aerosmith? Like, no, it wasn't Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they would put me to bed maybe when I was like a child when oh, I was listening well, to them. Oh, I'm talking about recently. Oh, okay. I, don't, I yeah. can't speak for their current stuff. Right. Well, anyway, so... It, well, yeah, some people it doesn't make any difference. Some people yeah. they'll, they'll hear things, they'll feel differently about the song. Sure. Because how you feel about music is really the whole, the whole ball. And you just want people to get something from yeah, it. Yeah, so, want to so be more do... connected to the music. I mean, the artists may have worked weeks, months, or possibly years right. to craft an album. And if you just have it on as you're doing other stuff, 
You're, you're missing a lot of what it's went into it. It's disrespectful. Say it. Y yeah, it it's sucks. It, these kids. These kids. What do they know? <laughs> well, they know a lot about streaming music because that's oh, basically yeah. how the planet consumes music these days. Oh, yeah. um, and it makes me sad. So what 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 can people do? I know you're in a you're in a bit of the minority there, but <laughs> what can people do to get the best sound quality out of streaming services? I mean, a lot of people use Spotify as far as the best. You can click the extreme quality button. Right. That's, which that's a good thing. is a higher bit rate right. Right, than what you get from the free version. But is there anything people can actually do to improve the quality? Get, get a good fair, pair of headphones. Yes, I was going to let everybody in on a secret. What's that? Whether it's uh, lossy MP3s or FLAC files, the way to make things sound better is to have better headphones or speakers. Okay. That's way more important. So you think whatever the file so you think that's the number one tool? Absolutely. Better speakers, better headphones. And something that like makes a big difference. The latest generation of phones, your your Samsungs or your your iPhones actually have a pretty good headphone amp in them. They're right. not really audiophile quality, but they'll drive a good set of headphones. Sure. Right. You can spend six hundred bucks on a pair of headphones, and they'll sound sound great for one of those. Phones. Right. right. Yeah, because I I have a decent set of uh, earbuds that I use on my Nexus Six P, listening to FLAC files, and I. I'm super happy with how yeah, that Yeah, but sounds. I assume if you listen to an MP3 file, it's not going to burn holes in your ear. Yeah, phone. you're not going to die because you do No, that. you won't die. You might die a little inside, well, but you're not going to actually each drop little dead. Hair fo um, in your little the follicles, right. the nerve endings, they'll die. They'll die. They'll right. just go. They'll be like, oh, I'm, not, I'm unimpressed. Yeah. Um, what about where you listen? We talked about this briefly with you a minute ago. Yes. But like, where you listen to music has a great deal of an impact of, of, of like the actual content that you're consuming, right? Like for me, I know if I want to check out the newest, you know, album from one of my favorite bands, I'm probably not going to listen to it while I'm walking through the street. Just because, like you said, like I do maybe want to have a little bit of a quieter thing. I'm not going to yeah. sit in the corner of the room with close my eyes and do it, but I'm definitely <laughs> going to like... Like in a lotus position. Yeah, exactly. And just like meditate. I'm not going to do that necessarily, but I'm going to find the time to do it where I'm not huh. multitasking. Um, I think better of you now. Oh, my stock has risen a little yeah. bit. All right, fair enough. But I like, think for me, yeah. like on the subway, it's basically the only time I can, funnily enough, get it some alone time. Sure. So having a good set of headphones and a decent music player even, even if you trade up from a normal phone... I've had some pretty, you know, fun experiences on a, on a train listening to music. So, right. Um, if you get some decent sort of noise blocking ones, and you know, then you'll be okay. Yeah. Well. Maybe. Now, aside from your freaky deaky like listening rituals, <laughs> wh wh where else can people listen and get like an okay experience? You mean other than home? Other than home in well, the closet, you know, like uh, you do. <laughs> on the beach or in a park bench. Right. Close your eyes. You just got birds tweeting around you. Huh. Not Life that is just a big tweeting. like fantasy for you, huh? <laughs> big fantasy? What do you what do you what do you I'm just implying? saying like you're closing your eyes in public places. You or... don't. I'm not always. New York City. I close my eyes all the time. Fair enough. I can, and it doesn't make a big difference. Always eyes open, closed. <laughs> That's true. That's a whole other story that we'll get yeah. to the next time on the show. Right. Uh, don't forget, we're taking your questions and comments. Anything audio related? Uh, you got two of the most prolific uh, audio reviewers in the biz right here. So and knowledgeable too. Knowledgeable too. I think that was implied with what I just said. Prolific meant a lot. It did. Not, not quality. Yeah. Nobody hears stuff the way these guys hear <laughs> stuff. So yeah. make sure you get those in. Uh, right now, guys, what would you say are your favorite speakers and or headphones? Well, what, because like speakers, if you want to get headphones. Yeah, you do headphones, Steve. What? What? You're the headphone guy. What's a good headphone for someone with like a hundred dollar budget? I, I am. I, I'm glad you're sitting down, because I'm going to say something that. You're not going to expect. You might think this is April 1st or something. Oh, my God. It's You're going to throw This is curveball Guttenberg. Right, right I want to make sure. I, I, I <laughs> Hold on. Is your name correct? Look at your <laughs> chicken it's, scratch. It's not a name. It uh, just rolls off the tongue. So it's the Bose uh, Sound True Ultra in-ear headphones. They're not sound buds that rest on your outer ears. They actually get jammed into your ears. Right. But they're 129 bucks. They're super, super comfortable. And it's the first Bose in-ear headphone or earbud that I like. Now, I don't like it. I love it, actually. Wow. I you, think for that kind of money, it's hard to beat. Traditionally, you despise everything Bose. Well, I'm, you know, I'm an impartial uh, journalist. I of course. Despise. I treat everybody fairly. Right, But I used to should. despise them. You just, they just haven't had a great track record with you. Yeah, everything sucks. Everything until sucks. Now. Until now. We right. found it. Right. All right, this is... But a, you know what they say, a stop clock is right twice a day. 
So every now and then they can squeeze out something good. Yeah, then they'll right. go back to making really crappy ones. Again. All right, all right. So tell us how you really feel. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is coming in from uh, YouTube uh, commenters as well. Like, what's uh, what about speakers? What's a favorite speaker of yours? Well, Ty? speakers is a weird one because you can get passive speakers for about one hundred and thirty dollars a pair. Passive of the right. Jones. hook them up to an amplifier or receiver. What is right. it? The BS twenty two. Yes, uh, SPBS twenty two LR. Right. So that's but, a lot. The I guess the, the future lot. of those. It's a lot to say. Oh. The yeah. future of those speakers is kind of weird um, because Pioneer sold most of its musical assets to Onkyo, who now are continuing the brand. And uh, I guess the America is the only market that carries Andrew Jones or a lot of Andrew Jones products. Okay. So, you know, some of these speakers go on sale um, all the time. Some of the speakers have disappeared, like they had a sound base, um, which is completely gone now. So, um, if you want to get Andrew Jones speakers now that he's moved on as well to ELAC and producing some really great stuff, absolutely. If you want to get Andrew Jones Pioneer stuff, I'd say don't Grab hesitate. It. I mean, get it right seriously, now. it's. There's nothing comparable for $129 a pair. I love seeing audio dudes get excited about no, audio stuff. I'm excited to get excited about something that real people can buy. It's not yeah, kill that's them. practical. And he's not going to say, oh, I'd like to get it, but I can't afford it. It's $129 right. a pair. Right. Yeah. It's not going to kill you. I mean, there are other cheaper speakers, say, from Dayton Audio, but yeah. I don't think they have the same quality. Not even the, close. The what do you Jones think about Ankyo? Ankyo, uh, I remember yeah. when, back in the day, I used to check out some... Uh, Ankyo systems and whatnot. Mm. Those they, they make like the whole all in you one know, package. Audio companies like Ankyo, it's like uh, vintages of wine. There are good years, they're not so good. Oh, okay. So, so you like. Sometimes they're good. So the 2012 was a nice, <laughs> yes, nice good vintage. Of that. There was too much rain in 2013. Yeah. yeah. And you could taste it. the crop. You could yeah. hear it. You the could sound hear it. was wetter. Yeah. <laughs> I, all I can say about Ankyo is that my one of my favorite experiences and I'm, one of the things that clued me into the hi fi hobby was listening to Dark Side of the Moon. Mm. On an Onkyo turntable. Now you're talking. 70s Onkyo turntable, electronics. It's beautiful. It's great. Analog. Yeah. Analog. No, I feel it. I See, uh, that didn't happen on a flak file. No, it didn't. You didn't get <laughs> You can still in. experience that. Absolutely. You know, you can still get good stuff out of flak. Like you whenever, can. When I, I listen to flak, yeah. I feel like I'm getting something you that are. most people aren't. You are. But you, the thing is, you literally do not know what you're missing. With right. MP3s. Right. Yeah. It's like if you only had you frozen know. orange juice and you never had an actual fresh squeezed orange juice. You Your say, tongue hey, frozen wouldn't orange know. juice is fine. It tastes great. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't know what an actual orange tastes like. Okay, how about this? What is the Sorry. what is the lowest? Is that unfair? It's not. No. A, it's a little unfair. Oh. Orange it's, juice. It's Exaggerate little, for it's a like, fact. Not, not the Edwin Collins. I never called juice. you a snob, Steve, He's but... You're a bit of a snob. <laughs> no, I, it's because I care. It's because you care and you listen. See, look, I'm covered. I could just sit in my house and say, I don't care about you guys. I, yeah. I got what I need. So screw you I do this because I'm trying to help people. You're spreading the love. I am. Through sound. Exactly. I'm spreading everything. Uh, okay. As wide as possible. Fair enough. Uh, how do I pivot out of that? I'm not <laughs> sure. Uh, what about sound bars? Let me go back to my shirt. Sound bars. Sound bars get a lot of, they catch a lot of uh, heat. Because some people say they're crap, uh, some people swear by them. What, what's a quick take on I used to swear at bars? them, yeah. and now I think there's a, a, a number every now and then that I, I, I admire. Like they've come a really long way. So you're happy? I am, especially for, for movies. I'm generally less happy with their sound for music. Okay. But for movies... It, is there one you recommend for under $100? No. no. <laughs> no. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. You want a sound bar? You got to spend a little more money. You can spend at least two hundred bucks. Okay. What a, name a brand, real quick, that you LG's like? LG's got some really good stuff at the moment. Pioneer, really? if you can still get Pioneer stuff, is good. All right. uh, Yamaha stuff is good. That's pretty much right. I'm learning a lot. Uh, yeah. I actually have to take some notes because people are asking me about sound bars. I believe we have questions from the live audience. Let's check in with Mike. Hi guys. Uh, so we have a few comments from our about sound from people. Uh, Melissa says, I do think a bit is lost via phones for sure, mostly her own hearing. Huh. Jackson says she just, he just wishes Apple Music and the Music app were separated. Pete says that he misses the attention given to album packaging. Some people are still trying. He lists Tool, Beyonce, et cetera, as examples. And Paul has a question. He, he says that he has Sonos speakers. He uses Deezer, Flack, high-end service. He's wondering if you guys think more music services are coming on the horizon. Probably not. I mean, the big one or the big rumor this week was that Apple is supposedly in talks to buy Tidal. So I think that, that 
what's going to happen is you're going to see consolidation of yeah. music services because there's a lot, particularly in Europe. There's uh, people like Deezer and Wimp became uh, Tidal, Tidal um, and it was its own brand for a while. So it's going to get smaller rather than bigger. I, I can see people being really boutique-y and, and collating and and being like that, but they're not going to make much money. Oh, Title began. You, wait, you missed your big opportunity. What's that? You just went right past it. What? The whole Rune thing. Oh, Seems Rune. Oh, look, I, lo I love Rune. <laughs> what Rune, was Rune? Rune is a very tweaky hi-fi system um, which integrates media on your hard drive with Title and okay. makes them into one library. Oh, wow. Uh, great service, amazing interface, costs $500. <laughs> but, oh. So this oh. is this. Is, well, that's for the lifetime, right? Okay. And 120 you're young, bucks you're a year. Like, that, that's actually you know, enough. That could be okay. 100 years. All right. right. So, yeah. uh, I love the service. Yeah. I'm still c trying to convince uh, Steve of it. Do Look, I, I like Bose headphones. <laughs> Anything right? can Anything's happen. possible. Anything, yeah. uh, do you guys ever think some uh, like, like a Spotify would switch, would turn the flak switch on? Sure. Yeah. 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 Really? Because that's. I feel like I, I would pay more money you a month. Oh, I'd How pay, much more? I'd pay $5. It's more. usually double. I'd pay 5 bucks. Right now, what's Spotify? 10 bucks? 10 bucks. I'd pay... Would you pay 20? I'd pay 15. I don't think I'd pay 20. i pay 20 for a title, and I love it. Yeah. T I, I, mean, look, I got rid of Spotify because stigma, I don't use it. The stigma associated with title is, is understandable, for I sure. I the stench. What's that? The stench. Yeah, the stench emanating, right? Yes. But at the same time, like, the service is great. The service is really good. It's just because the of whole the, rigmarole the politics last year. around it. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like I would definitely pay 15 a month for Spotify. Titles 20? Yeah. Yeah, see, that's like maybe that's kind of like the threshold for me. Right. Um, I just think like I think streaming flack is like such a rad idea. Right. I was super psyched when Title came along, said they were doing that, but then all that other stuff happened and right. kind of left. But on your a bad Spotify, taste. do you put stuff on your phone? Do you download to your phone? Much? I don't. Why not? Should I? I do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've never really found myself in a situation where I mean, I also do have the flack stuff that I bought loaded onto my phone. Oh, right. So okay. that's kind of okay. where okay. I, I, I balance everything. So you still buy and, and download and I do. Stuff, Not so. often, but I do. Yeah. yeah I do. Out of guilt? Out of guilt and, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, you know, self-pity, that kind of thing. Well, I, right. I, I prefer the guilt. All right, fair okay. enough. Anything gets you to support living bands. Right. You know, make them say, hey, guys, you know, it's okay. Make more records. Make more. Somebody will, Jeff will actually buy them. It's true. And, you know, to that point, uh, someone in, in the chat room brought up the idea of, like, the lost art of, you know, packaging and, and that kind of experience of opening the record, opening the CD. Yeah. <sighs> you know, I struggle with that because I used to love that. Growing up, buy, buying the new, you know, no effects CD, like, flipping through the thing, right. buying whatever, like, seeing, oh, what are they saying in that song? Like, right. what is this? Oh, what are these awful photos they decided to include in the booklet? That's interesting. <laughs> oh, that's a weird stamp they have on the CD. Yeah. That's weird. Um, yeah, I miss that, but just like a book cover, I've kind of just learned to let, let it go. go. You right. let go. If you love it, set it free. That's what yeah. I say. But something is lost. It is lost. lost. I think, you know what I think is lost? I think a band or a group or whoever an artist has a tougher time communicating their personality. Right. Mm. I mm -hmm. think like that's kind of lost in the right. whole thing. Yeah. Music videos, I guess, are still a thing on YouTube. They're nowhere near as uh, prevalent as they were in, in the 80s and 90s. I feel like that communication is kind of lost. Right. So, Oh, well. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Steve. We have to say goodbye to you. Okay. We're going to take a break. When we come back... Someone different is going to be sitting where you are at. All right. We're going Can to they fill my shoes? Definitely not because you have such huge feet. All right. 13 <laughs> wide. Where can people follow you on Twitter? <coughs> Audiophiliac man. At Audiophiliac man. Reach out to Steve on Twitter if you want any more audio questions. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a break. Let's toss to Mike in the control room. All right, guys. Thank you so much for all your questions about audio. We just want to give you a couple Quick shout outs across both our YouTube and Facebook chats. So hello on YouTube to Diana, Sean, Joe, Seth, Harry, Billy, and Randall. Over on Facebook, hi to Miguel, Bob, Pete, Stuart, Robert, Jamie, Eric, Bernard, Dave, Paul, RJ, and Dennis. Please keep the chat going. We're going to move on to our next segment. We're talking about uh, uh, what we like and don't like about iOS 10, uh, the dangers of Pokemon Go, 
um, and uh, just favorite music artists. So feel free to keep chatting, and we'll keep bringing you in. And as long as we're ready to go, we will throw back to Jeff and continue on. Yes, we will. Okay, now sitting on the couch, like he owns the place, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Open Tab, Mr. Joseph Kaminsky. It's good to be the king. It is good to be the king. <laughs> you look well. You look well rested. I am, thank you. Yeah? Back from the Caribbean, wasn't it? The Bahamas. Tell yeah. us. It was what beautiful. did you do there? Did you gamble? Leah did, I didn't. Okay. I don't gamble. Not with money. Mm, I don't gamble. I don't gamble. Just with life. I'm a sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we got Joe back here. Ty's going to stick around. It's time to parlay this conversation into what we're uh, kind of experiencing in the iOS 10 beta. The public beta is out. If you have an Apple device, you can get it on your tablet, on your phone, uh, whatever the hell else they make. What uh, Have you played around with it at all? Briefly, um, uh, Jacob put it actually on his iPhone. I refuse to put it on mine right Why now. Why is that? Because we talked about this today on 404, how um, betas are BS. Well, it's, it's a number of things. I, I'd done the beta on my 6 Plus last year, and the, the, the releases for it aren't, there's, there's no rhyme or reason for the releases. And then Wait, what does that mean? The, the update for the beta. There's no rhyme or reason because there's certain things that may not work or may work, like gotcha. video may play or something. Oh, you're talking, that's a developer yeah. thing. But yeah. and, um, and then when the full one comes out, there's sometimes a problem just pushing that through. Sometimes you just wind up having to, right. to download and force it. It's like, you know what? I'll just wait. Last thing I'm going to do is try to make a phone call and have that be the one feature not working. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a safe bet that that'll always work. It's funny. Even, even like my, my, my mom, who's very disconnected from like the uh, you know keeping track of, of iOS updates she's always like yeah I'll wait till the point one comes out just because I know I gotta let that dust settle a little bit and she's not wrong like <laughs> no, you she's really not. Right. it really has they have to shake the cobwebs out of that thing before you can get a reliable I build. Think there's just so much pressure to keep putting something out to stay innovative it's just to keep ahead that a lot of times we become the beta testers even even <laughs> oh totally like don't 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 be mistaken they are collecting data on on how the beta goes and and you know taking that under consideration so you, are you familiar with any of the new features or is there anything about 10 that um, you're sort of psyched about um the text features probably fun back and forth with you know with my son and so forth the lift the, the, when you lift it up and the notification seems pretty cool to swipe right. for the notification sounds like they're spending the a lot more time on the lock screen too right yeah that the lock screen has some cool notification features um, what I would love, and hopefully they'll do it, is maybe under the settings with the 3D Touch. Yeah. If they'd enable it where you can customize it, because the only thing I really want to go to under the 3D Touch really quickly from the settings would be to turn my hotspot on and off. Right. I think that would be really cool. I mean, I'm not sure if they did anything with that. Um, what else did they do with that thing? Well, well Ty, you're an, you're an Android guy. Right. Like myself. You, you've, I've seen an iPhone. Have you touched one? I had, I think the last iOS I had was iOS 5, maybe. 5? Okay. So I had a... This makes you touch Oh, he's touching it. Yeah. I had the the four S or the four. Right. So and then I went to Android. What? So you've been there for a while. Right. Um, me, me personally, I am indifferent. Like, I I'm an Android guy because I happen to like that OS better. Right. Um, I don't. I think if something came along attractive enough from an iPhone, I, I would switch. I've just never been presented with an opportunity to be like, oh, this is the time to switch over. Is right. there something that would would convince you? To consider making the switch? I don't know. If the design was good enough, yeah. I think that that particularly the iPhone has sort of been in a kind of holding pattern design-wise. Right. I think the 4 was probably the nicest. And there was a throwback. Was it the 6S had the glass back again? No, the... 7 the, or... Oh, they haven't even announced well, the, 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 the 4 The 4S had, was the last of the glass. Right. Oh, okay. Last the, of the I like that design, the and that's why I had that glass. phone. Yeah. But, um, I think, you know, you get a lot more variety, obviously, with Android. You've got hundreds totally. of different models you can choose from. So I, that's a mixed blessing, right? That's like right. A, you deal with fragmentation and, and issues like that. Right. And the I fact that each manufacturer has to modify the OS to fit right. their phone nah, and you're waiting you for Nexus. like six months or... Yeah. That's well, why you, you buy a Nexus. Nexus. And, that's, that's and the like Nexus have had some really nice phones. Definitely. Uh, Mike in the control room tells me there is a question from the chat room. Yeah, guys. So uh, Nicholas says, if there's one thing he doesn't like about iOS 10, it's clicking the home button to unlock the phone, because so, uh, there was a big change with the uh, notification screen and the unlock screen. Right. And on YouTube, we had someone who asks, 
Um, I'm not sure if we know this definitively yet, though. Uh, did Apple fix the battery problems with iOS 10 on the iPhone 6S? I don't know about that with the battery stuff. It might be too early to tell. Yeah, I mean, when you're in beta, you can never rely on battery. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right. I, I, would, I would assume it'd be, it, it burned through your battery quicker. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think one thing that's also overlooked when it comes to the whole iOS, Android thing is money invested. Um, I had the first iPhone and didn't get another iPhone again until the 4S, but I did get an iPod Touch in between that. And I've purchased a number of songs, speaking of which everybody was talking about purchases, and at that time, Apple had you locked because they were, you know, the, the, the music was encrypted. Yeah. So, you know, between music purchased, movie purchases, um, apps purchased, sometimes you're kind of just locked there because you spent more money on your library than you actually did on the device. And yeah. I do, and I have, like, I've, I've from the, the first generation iPod Touch, have been purchasing stuff through it. So, I mean... I'm well invested in that. Maybe if there was an incentive program where let's say you wanted to buy an Android device and and developers said, hey, you want Angry Birds for such and such, if you're switching from iOS, we'll give you a discount or something like that. They may they may inspire a jump between, but that's probably another reason why a lot of people probably stay with where they are and they just defend it to lend because no one wants to be on the sinking ship, so to speak. All right, you have your marching orders, mm -hmm. Mr. Cook. Get to it. <laughs> uh, let's move along. Amazon Prime Day is July 12th. If you recall Amazon Prime Day, it is the one day of the year that Amazon uh, sort of came up with a self-declared holiday, right. if you will, uh, mm -hmm. offering thousands and thousands of sales on their site, exclusive to Prime members. Uh, Prime Day Take Two is happening July 12th. We know a little bit about it. We know that they are focusing on TVs and toys. Toys is super vague. I don't know what the hell that means. Um, some deals are rolling out ahead of the uh, sale itself. They're calling them like countdown prime deals. What do you guys think about Prime Day? Are you psyched? Are you tepid? What's the deal? Last year was kind of disappointing. It was really bad. They had this big build up. It's going to be bigger than Black Friday. Yeah. And it kind of fell over in a heap. No, there was, I don't know, I didn't take advantage of any of the sales. I, well, I didn't get hard to find I bought anything. A, I bought a dust buster. <laughs> and then I found out I saved like 78 cents. Right. And I was like, what the hell? I didn't really need to do that. I guess because with Black Friday, you have people like us who can count down the deals and they're collating it all. Sure. And all the news outlets are. Prime Day is kind of its own thing and it's harder to catalog and point to where the good stuff is. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, for me, it's just like, I get it. I know why Prime Day exists. And, like, you know, for what it's worth, it did real well last year. They, Amazon killed it on right. Prime Day, even though there was, like, this inexplicable sort of understanding of, of what was on sale and what wasn't. Right. Um, it makes sense that they would do this again. I don't know. Did you buy anything last year, Joe? No, I didn't buy anything. Yeah? No. If I don't, you know, it has to be really good to force me to purchase something, like, when I'm not planning on purchasing it. Right. But um, I, I, I didn't see anything. There was nothing that really impressed me. I mean, the last thing I think I bought, like pre-ordered, was the Echo. Okay. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you think about, like... Oh, and the Fire TV stick, when it was 20... When, for and you've got to imagine, like, all their first-party stuff is going to be on sale. I would imagine, right. like, Kindles go on sale, everything goes on sale. For me, it's just, like, the navigation was kind of twisted up. I felt like I had a really tough time understanding what was the, what was the deal. They were having these flash sales, right. and I was just like... This I need to like research. I have to like draw out right. a map. Right, and that's yeah, what they yeah, don't want you to do. Yeah, because be they kind of got the monopoly on their own site, so right. they can control what is you know highlighted. Or, For sure, yeah. it seemed a little counterintuitive, but hey, I'm obviously going to Amazon.com <laughs> on July 12th right. to check it out. But hopefully it's going to be good. You know? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, well, the, the nice thing for like people now is that they don't have to pay for the full year. They can just do the monthly subscription if they kind of want to slip in and, and just check out the sale and be right. out. You're not, you're not committed HBO for the whole year. So. Yeah, I mean, well, that, that's, that's cool because yeah. if, if you come in and, and that month is disappointing, you, you're not stuck paying that whole 100 for the whole year. Don't forget, it's only good for Prime members. Uh, that's July 12th, and uh, well, I guess we'll have like a post-mortem. There are two types of Prime members. There's the monthly and the annual. Yeah, we'll have a post-mortem on Prime Day next week. Okay, what do you guys know about Pokemon Go? <laughs> I know you know way more than you're willing to catch them all, Gary. I, 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 I'm not a Pokemon fan. Oh, you're a Dragon no, Ball I'm guy. A, I'm a Dragon Ball guy, yes. I, couldn't you tell everybody? That's right. Just yeah. by looking at them? That's my, my Krillin, my uh, Krillin cut. So, po so do you know anything about Pokemon Go? All I know is there was a story earlier this week 
It was actually the first thing I heard about yeah. Pokemon Go was that the Darwin Police Department in Darwin, Australia, Northern Territory, where we have been to, because mm-hmm. everyone in Australia has been everywhere in Australia. Yeah, you've been but there. Um, I got you. they Wait, said you're Australian. You... <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Um, but uh, they said that they issued a warning yeah. to, to people saying you weren't allowed to go into the Darwin Police Department or the police station to uh, to get your Pokemon Go characters. Right. So if they appeared there, you weren't allowed in. Surely they'd say, you know, don't go into strangers' houses or, you know, don't go off cliffs. It's, no, don't go into the police station. Yeah, okay. Australia doesn't really have a lot of problems, I guess. So <laughs> that's, that's something that, you know, sur- uh, surfaced to the top. So here's what Pokemon Go is. It's a mobile uh, game that uses AR. So Augmented reality. Augmented reality, which means you're holding up your phone's camera in the world around you, and they're sort of like, putting they're placing pokemon around areas in the real world and you have to like flick out the ball the pokemon balls am i saying that I right so. i don't know anything about pokemon <laughs> <laughs> i know my son would go crazy if they had a yokai yeah uh, whatever that he, is he loves yokai oh okay you need a yokai watch this yokai right i forgot to get one um so <laughs> that's so that's a thing a lot of people are complaining that it doesn't work though everyone's calling it pokemon stop <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, because like the servers are having issues connecting. Oh, uh, we were talking about today, uh, my buddy Russ was only able to hook into it like twice. Not enough. Like set up a username and that was it. Not enough money to keep the servers going. I don't know if that's what it is, but... Instead of Pikachu, broke you. You know, <laughs> that, this is not a great launch for that brand. And I feel like it's been a rough... It's been a rough couple of years. Oh, man. Not just, well, Pokemon's been all right, but like the Nintendo sort of brand has taken a bit of a beating. The Wii U was supposed to sell 100 million copies. Well, that's just what one And there was 12. Person. <laughs> they sold 12 million or well, something. Well, you know, that's 12 million's a lot. That's, sure. That's a lot for that, I guess. Wow. Um, anyway. Let us know hey, what you, you think buy, about Would Pokemon you buy a Wii U if it was on sale on Amazon Prime? Yeah. hundred bucks. I'd, 100, buy a hundred. Well, I'd buy it for 99 bucks. So that would yeah. be the Garden Ray for, you heard mm-hmm. that Amazon, there hundred you go. bucks. There Mr. You go. Bezos, we got, <laughs> we got advice for Mr. Cook and Mr. Bezos. Take note. Um, all right, and I definitely want to bring up the band Steve brought up because right now I want to know what everyone's favorite band is right now. Like, what are you listening to? Maybe this played in a little better with the conversation before, but who are you listening to? Steve said Mystery, what did you say? Mystery Lights. Mystery Lights from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Uh, so check those guys out. What do I listen to? Any new, any new bands? There is a Pokemon connection with the band that I like. Stop it. <laughs> How is that even a thing? I there is knew a band there's a called reason. Mew, which is a Pokemon character. Mew? Mew, M-E-W. Okay. There's you a can band. name anything. Oh, that's a Pokemon. There's a, <laughs> there's a band who really <clears throat> like Mew, except they're death metal. Oh, okay. Now and they're called about Astronoid. Now you're talking that's, my language. That's a re- it's a really sort of space poppy death metal record, and I really love it. Yeah. Mew. Mew. All right. What about you? No, no, Astronaut Mew oh. is the band they like. Astronaut. Right. I'm, 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 I'm the caught in the time warp. I, I listen to mostly like old stuff, like old freestyle, old Pac, Biggie. Right. And stuff. I mean, a couple of new songs that trick her out, maybe, but I mean, old freestyle. That's about it. I'm pretty boring. You said it, not me. <laughs> uh, I'm listening to a and band Lux, uh, like called that. Thrice right now. Thrice. They have a new record that is actually surprisingly good. You've heard of Thrice. Only three times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I guess we're going to have to end things on that day. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another edition of Open Tab. You can catch us eat, catch us each and every week right here on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you want to consume us. Uh, keep the conversation going in the comment section below. We will see you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until then, oh, well, thank you, thank you. This is a cute thing. Oh, <laughs>